it's time to discuss the answer for GS paper 1 for prelims 2022. And at ALS Edukemi, we have decided that instead of one front line or lead faculty coming and giving explanation and telling you the answer for paper 1, five of us will sit and we'll have a conversation about the answer for the questions which were asked in paper 1. But before we start discussing the answer, in general, uh, let us uh, first see how was the question this year and what can be the possible and probable cutoff. Uh, if you ask me, uh, when, when, when we also have solved the paper on our own uh, after the exam, what we found that on the basis of difficulty levels in various module of GS, we will rate the question almost the way it was previous year. So we are expecting for general category the cutoff will be in the range of 86 to 88 or 85 to 90. You know, in that range, we are first, in prima facie, we are predicting the cutoff to be. And uh, particularly if we see in history, uh, the difficulty level of questions were higher in comparison with previous two, three years. Similarly, in economics, we have found the difficulty level of questions slightly higher in comparison with previous year and two years. In polity, I would say that if we do year to year uh, comparison, then this year, some of the questions were easy and uh, Similarly, in geography, I would say that some of the questions were very straightforward and easy in comparison to previous year. But overall, if we see economics, history, polity, geography, science and technology, current affairs, you know, then what we are finding that we are expecting cutoff to be in the range for general category uh, somewhere around 85, 86, okay. So this is this is the first uh, you know ex, uh, first impression which we got after solving the paper. I have with me uh, Jojo Matthew sir, Sabir sir. I also have with me Alok Sankar Jha and Ajay Sirvastav, and all five of us together one by one will be taking up questions and will be telling you answer and wherever some discussion and some explanation needed required. We will be providing, but before that, I would like Jojo sir to give his opening comment on the question paper and the probable possible cutoff. So, uh, see, the, the thing is, every time when we analyze the question paper, uh, we always feel that uh, the first reaction is questions are a bit easy. Uh, then later on, as we uh, revise the uh, question or as we start looking again and again, uh, we feel that things are not that easy. So it's once again the same thing. Uh, I think uh, like last year where the cutoff has come down to almost 87. So it may be in a similar range. It cannot be, uh, it may not be more, it cannot be less. So it may be anywhere between 85 to 90. Uh, that is what we generally feel. But this is only a first remark. You should not take it that 100% serious. So if you are able to get uh, anything above 80, uh, in this paper uh, yeah, for a general ca category candidate, I will feel I, I should advise that, you know, you should go ahead with your uh, preparation for main exam as early as possible without any delay because anything above 80, it's a question of one or two questions here and there. And moreover, as we know very well, there are at least five questions in this paper uh, which uh, where the answers are not very clear. So uh, we should always keep that margin of error. So I believe uh, anyone who is getting above 80 uh, out of 200 in paper 1 in a, as a general category candidate should be seriously preparing for the main exam. Uh, that is the first reaction from my side. Okay, so now Sabirji, can you give your opening comment on the question paper in paper 1? Uh, what I like about this question paper this year is the paper is very, very balanced. Uh, what we found is the questions across subjects, economy, polity, geography, uh, uh, topics of current affairs and general study, uh, general knowledge, GK. Uh, the questions 
are in the range of 12, 13, 14 questions for each section. So, a very balanced paper. Uh, and sir very rightly remarked that anybody scoring 80, and I would say anybody scoring even above 75 for that matter, because you never know how the things change. Last time I remember some of them had predicted cutoff at 90, and many people had stopped studying who had scored in the range of 87, 88 also. And uh, some had uh, predicted a cutoff of even 93, 94 also. So take a good margin. Anybody scoring above 75, 78, Okay, I think you should get into serious preparation of the mains examination and we'll clarify eventually what are the questions that, that need to be debated again. But that's my so suggestion. Uh, there are speculations I can understand, but let us not be influenced by that. So all the best, all of you. I think we can get started. If sir has to say something. Yes, so Prince, uh, what, what he is saying that uh, if you are getting anything above 75, and above, it should be treated as a borderline. And if you are getting 80 and above, the probability and possibility of you getting a call for main very high. So on very serious note, you should start the preparation for the main. I have with me Alok Shankarja. I would like him to give some comment on questions in history in general. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, history questions are, of course, some typical questions we have. But they are still following some general pattern because they are asking questions related to historical terms, historical texts. They are also asking questions related to historical person. So they are following the same trend, but yes, uh, some complicated question they are asking. But we, we can still manage five, six questions out of 14 or 15 questions they have asked. Out of that, right, we can manage five or six questions very easily, fine. So you should not consider it as a big challenge, but yes, textbook reading would be right uh, a relevant uh, strategy now. We cannot just prepare by going for some compiled kind of material. So now in the coming days, probably, we have to emphasize textbook reading. We have to emphasize all those terms. And if you have seen there is a growing importance of ancient and medieval India. Generally, we follow modern India-based approach in preliminary examination. But you have realized it like last two years, they are asking more questions from ancient medieval, and of course, culture-related question of ancient and medieval India. Right. So gradually, right, uh, in coming discussion, we will be elaborating how or where right, we should emphasize. Now very quickly if uh, Ajay can comment on economics questions and his first response on question paper. As far as economics is concerned, uh, I think as the rest of the question paper, uh, it seems that the question paper is becoming more reasonable in comparison to the previous two, three years. Uh, this will help to make a distinction between the students who have studied properly serious students and non-serious students. So I think most of the questions they are big towards conceptual side. There have been three distinct types of questions which have been asked in economics, which we will get into detail uh, when we get into the detailed discussion on uh, every question. That's what I want to say right now. Okay, so now straight away we will go for discussion for the answers of and we have with us uh, we have with us uh, this uh, booklet B okay so we will be following booklet or test series B uh, to give you explanation for questions and we will be going in a sequential manner from question number one to question number hundred and uh, others if you are struggling to find the mapping so question number 1 to 10 in booklet B e is what is question number 41 to 50 in booklet A, question number 51 to 60 in booklet C, question number 81 to 90 in booklet D. So we will go, you know, uh, in accordance with questions which are in booklet B. So the first question is from environment and its climate action tracker as an organization, but uh, what is there, you know, it was in news for different regions, but uh, if you see various options given in this question, you can easily eliminate 
because uh, you know climate action track and is neither a wing nor a committee nor a agency but actually if you see this climate action tracker uh, it is an independent scientific analysis and that tracks the government's climate action and measures uh, globally agreed paris climate agreement to keep the warming within 2 degree celsius in comparison with pre industrial revolution and going all out to limit the warming to 1.5 degree celsius and basically this climate action tracker uh, is uh, a database which has been created by coalition of two very important research organization one is climate analytics and second is new climate institute and since 2009 it is you know into this uh, job so the answer for question number 1 is a alpha database created by coalition coming to question number 2 again it is a question related with environment only and uh, if i have to tell you ep 100 again it was in news for many reason okay so basically what i would just like to tell you that this climate group is an international non profit organization which was founded in 2003 and it has come up with this idea of ep 100 ep 100 basically uh, this this climate group has estimated that if top 100 companies in the world if they will increase their you know energy productivity then you know significant amount of emission can be prevented okay so if we if we go by this very easily you can find the answer to be b bombay i'll take up question number 3 uh, it is uh... Uh, from geography related to environment and uh, uh, wetland issues it says if rain forests and tropical forests are the lungs of the earth the wetlands are the kidneys so the answer for this i think is pretty straight forward the aquatic plants the mangrove forests the estuaries they have the ability of absorbing pollutants and heavy metals like cadmium arsenic and the rest and they also are responsible for uh, neutralizing the effects of eutrophication So I think it's a very straight question. Uh, three answer is D, uh, Delta. So now we will move to question number four. Okay, and uh, in question number four, there are four statements given related with WHO air quality guidelines. These guidelines were published after a gap of 15 years in 2021, and probably that could be the reason why they have. ask this question but some conceptual statements are also there okay so there are four statements and we have to find the correct ones so the first statement says that 24 hr mean of particulate matter 2.5 should not exceed you know 15 and annual mean of particulate matter 2.5 should not exceed you know 5 uh, uh, 5 okay so as far as this statement one is concerned it's correct uh, in statement two in a year the highest level of ozone pollution occurs during the period of inclement you know weather now this statement is incorrect and some pollution such as ground level ozone is made more efficient in sunny and hot weather so statement two is you know incorrect statement three if you see says that the particulate matter can penetrate the lung barrier and enter the blood stream while we were solving you know there were some difference of opinion about the correctness of this statement but finally what we have concluded that particulate matter you know particulate matter can move deep up to lung but it cannot penetrate particulate matter then sorry can penetrate deep up to lung but it cannot you know uh, cross the lung barrier to enter into the blood stream and this is why we have uh, decided that this statement number 3 is wrong and the statement number 4 that excessive ozone in the air can trigger asthma but uh, one thing ground ozone is bad ozone whereas ozone in the 
propose uh, which is embedded in higher atmosphere is good ozone. So it's talking about ground ozone which can trigger asthma. Four is correct. So the answer for question number you know four is P beta where one and four are correct and two and three statements are wrong. Now we will move to question number five which is from science. Question number five with respect to uh, Gucci, sometimes mentioned in news, is basically uh, a, a, a very costly uh, mushroom which is being developed or rather which is being, uh, you know, used in western uh, Himalayas, uh, Himachal Pradesh, uh, Uttarakhand, even in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. So because of this, so uh, it's a mushroom, it's a, it's a fungus, it's, uh, it's grown in some Himalayan forest area. So one and two are correct. So answer should be C. And it is not cultivated in the northeastern India. It is in northwestern India. So that is how uh, it is coming. So the uh, answer should be C. So then question number six is with reference to uh, polyethylene uh, terephthalate. Okay. And uh, question number six, uh, the answer is A. And one and three are correct. And in fact, uh, it, its fiber can be blended with wool and cotton fibers to reinforce their properties. And a bottle made of it can be recycled into other products. So these three are, in fact, only two options are given. We have to go for elimination here. Even though some of these containers can be used for storing alcoholic beverages also, but we have no, one and three are more appropriate. So we don't have a third option to be added. So that is why uh, we are going ahead with A. Uh, six is A. That is one and three are correct. Other two can be eliminated in the process. And question number seven, uh, it is about, which of the following is not a bird. This golden uh, musher is not a bird. All other three are birds. So we have a straight away uh, Indian nightjar, spoonbill, white ibis, all are birds. Golden, uh, you know, golden musher is a fish. So which is not a, so answer is A, which is not a bird. Seven A is the answer. Then coming to uh, question number eight, uh, the answer is A again. 1, 3, and 4 are correct. Which of the following are nitrogen fixing plants? So, uh, alpha, alpha is there, chickpea is there, clovers are there, but others are, you know, like uh, uh, amaranth or, uh, you know, uh, kulfa, spinach are there all nitrogen using. They will be consuming, but 1, 3, and 4 are the most appropriate answers. So, answer should be A as far as this question, nitrogen fixing plants are concerned. Then, question number 9 that is in, in this series, that is bio rock technology. Which is the following, it is about, again, answer is A, it's about restoration of damaged coral reefs. In fact, by using some uh, electrolysis process and all, we are trying to activate and speed up the process of formation of the corals. That is what we are trying in bio rock technology. So, question number 9, here the restoration of uh, A should be the answer. Similarly, question number 10, uh, which is the uh, Mayawaki method, it's a Japanese technology whereby how to develop gardens using, rather, how to develop a mini forest in urban areas, in where, where the space is very less. When you have very little space, a few square yards, how to develop a, uh, you know, uh, multi, uh, you know, you know multi-species uh, mini forest to be created. This is a Japanese technology we are trying even in Hyderabad and all. So that is where uh, this uh, my, uh, Miyawaki technology is being. So answer should be C in this particular case. And... Uh, uh, question number 11. Uh, here, see, question number 11, Manish, you just tell uh, in other series what is the, uh, you know, yeah, that is important for us. Yes. So, now in the B series, we are moving from question number 11 to question number 20. And same 10 questions in series A is serial numbered uh, 31 to 40, whereas in series C, it is 61 to 70, and in D series, it is 91 to 100. So, uh, question number 11, this Ayurveda Setu, Kovin, DigiLocker, uh, Diksha, all are on open source digital platform. So, question number 11 is C. Sorry. Uh, is it D? Question number 11 is D. All, all are there. See, 1, 2, 3, and 4. In fact, there are some confusion regarding this uh, uh, Kovin uh, when, uh, whether it is a, a you know open source uh, or not, but it has been fully clarified now. 
all the four, one, two, three, and four, all are in the open source uh, platform only. Similarly, question number twelve, uh, where uh, with reference to Web 3.0, consider the following statement: All the three statements are correct. So D is the answer. Web 3.3 technology enables people to control their own data. In a Web 3.3 world, there can be blockchain-based social network. It is operated by users collectively rather than by a corporation. So all the answer, all the three statements are correct in question number 12. So answer should be D. Similarly, question number 13. Again, luckily, you know, this time what I have found is most of the statements they are giving right. So all the three statements are correct again in question number 13. That is software as a, so a service, a SaaS. All the three statements are correct. If buyers can customize their user interface and can change data field also, they can access their data through their mobile devices, uh, Yahoo Mail or Hotmail. All are based on the same idea only, SaaS only. So all the three statements are correct. So question number 13. Uh, it is D. Then uh, coming to the next question, that is question number fourteen about a fractional orbital bombardment system. It's a very interesting thing. Answer is C. Uh, here, uh, you know, this is a missile which can be launched in an orbit, and this missile will revolve around the Earth. And finally, depending upon the requirement, it can finally get you know guided to a particular target. So you will never know when it is launched. Nobody can guess. For whom this missile is launched. So this particular technology, what we call fractional orbital bombardment system, even though it is not a new technology, it was uh, you know first developed in 1965. But uh, it was it's a very costly affair. Then we had this uh, uh, various uh, uh, arms control treaties which were coming up. A uh, start one, start two. You might have heard of all these things. So this was not uh, especially after start two. Uh, this has been uh, controlled actually, or it has not been developed by uh, USSR or uh, US and all. But now it is in use. That is why it has come into question uh, right now because China, or rather US, is accusing that China is developing the same technology once again, or they are trying to have missiles which can be launched in the orbit. It will be revolving in the orbit, and as and when it is required, it can be guided to a target. It can be really dangerous. So all the anti-missile uh, technologies will fail. In this particular case, so it's a very interesting one, fractional orbital bombardment one. So answer is C. Fourteen is answer is C. Coming to question number fifteen, it's a simple question about qubit. See quantum computing. Uh, you know that is uh, we we know the binary numbers in our computing system one and two or open and close or uh, on or off. But here in quantum computing, we are talking. It's a new technology, or rather, it is a future technology, quantum computing, and where qubits are used in quantum computing only. So, in this particular case, answer should be B. And where you know you will be saying that a particular object can have, uh, you know, it may not be, we may not be decide whether it's on or off. It can be in between also. It's very interesting, and it is a future technology. Coming to question number sixteen here, following technologies which are. A short-range device technology. All the three are short-range device technologies. So uh, D is the answer because uh, whether it is a closed-circuit television, radio frequency identification, wireless local area network, all the three are short-range device technologies only. So question number 16 should be D. Then coming to question number 17. 17 biofilms. Again, all the three statements are correct. See, you are lucky to get such questions where even if you have slight doubt. Uh, we can go ahead. Okay, here all the two questions are correct. Uh, sorry, uh, no, all the three questions, all statements are correct. Biofilms can form on medical implants within the human tissue. Then biofilms can form on food and food processing surfaces. Biofilms can exhibit antibiotic resistance also. See, ah, see, unfortunately, in our question which is typed, uh, there are three, uh, three statements. The third statement, biofilms can exhibit antibiotic resistance. Which is missing? See, biofilm. Best example is our tooth plague. You know, the the coloring, which is there. That's a good example of biofilm. Or uh, you know, on on a pond, on a local pond, if a, a surface is filled with uh, algae, that is also a biofilm. So, so many examples of biofilms are there, and it can. All the three statements given in this question are correct. So, answer should be D. And now moving into question number eighteen regarding probiotics. Here, luckily or unfortunately, anyway, again the option there, all the three statements are not there. So you have to identify two of them which are correct. It is one and three are correct. So uh, 18 question uh, answer is C because second statement, 
the probiotic, probiotic that that is probiotic dahi, probiotic curd which we consume, uh, it can be made of both bacteria and yeast, which is correct. Second statement is wrong. The organisms in probiotics are found in food we ingest, but they do not naturally occur in our gut. That is wrong. It is actually enhancing the gut flora. Probiotics will help in increasing the quantity of the bacteria in our stomach, which is already present. We are enhancing it. So, it is the, the second statement saying that they are not naturally occurring in our gut. That is not naturally occurring in our intestine. That is wrong. So, second statement is wrong. One and three are correct. So, answer is C. Question number 19 about the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and the, uh, the, the, uh, the vaccines which are coming. So, B is the answer. Two and three are correct. Because the Serum Institute of India produced COVID-19 vaccine named Covishield. See, uh, Serum Institute has not uh, produced uh, uh, this, co you know, this Covishield, uh, uh, you know, Covaxin, Covaxin, Covishield only. Yeah, yeah. So, that is correct. But uh, in Serum Institute's issue, uh, just a minute, let me just uh, uh, look into that. Yeah. So, the Covishield is made from a weakened version of a common cold virus known as adenovirus. So, uh, Covishield from mRNA platform is wrong. It is from a common cold virus known as adenovirus. Covaxin is an inactivated viral vaccine. Sputnik is an adeno adenovirus vector platform. Okay, so in among the three, uh, one is wrong. So answer should be B. So question number 19, the answer should be B. Two and three are correct. And coming to question number 20. Yeah, that is a geography question uh, about solar flare. Uh, you know, yes, I'll, I'll right. take that up, yeah. sir. So, question number 20 is for solar flare, and I think in this question paper, I'll consider this question as a, as the uh, showstopper. Okay, I do not remember in my uh, learning uh, and teaching history, we ever had a question that had seven statements. And while I was doing this question, by the time I read all the statements and the choices, I had forgotten the question itself. <laughs> So, so this is the first stopper for me. Uh, fine, let's start off with this one. So, I think most of us know um, uh, uh, what is a solar uh, flare or solar storm. It's a, a phenomena where the sun uh, starts to heat up dramatically and there are uh, some kind of uh, uh, surface flames from the sun that start impacting uh, earth and earth's magnetic, uh, uh, say, uh, envelope around it. So, most of the problems because of solar flare are around navigation, around GPS. So statement one is correct, uh, statement three is correct, uh, statement six is correct, statement seven is correct. And speaking honestly, uh, many of us, yeah, even four is correct. Yes, the solar flare do impact uh, the auroras, but aurora is not about the communication. But four is correct. The confusion that we might have is one is around the forest fires. Uh, to some extent, even I had a uh, belief that solar flares can cause massive forest fires, but that's not so. Uh, a lot of... Shapir, I would like to add in this, uh, you know, uh, what is happening here is... Uh, so, <laughs> what is... What is... <laughs> <laughs> okay, in when there are seven such options, we should go by the answer. See, in fact, you know, if you know that question number... So option number two is wrong. Like tsunami could occur at equatorial region. We know that it cannot create tsunami. If you eliminate two from the option, you can see in option number A, there is two. Option number B, there is two. And option number D, there is two. So you just eliminate two, then the answer is C automatically. And forest fire, has, unfortunately, has gone out of it. Yes, and, yes. And one more thing in this, no, if you see a statement five, what it says, that forest fire could take place over much of the planet. Yeah. That's so why it's wrong. That is why we can eliminate that, no, it, it's not correct. And in fact, uh, solar flares have the least uh, relationship with forest fires. A lot of researchers on that. So anyways, this, this question, the answer is uh, C. Elimination. Method. Elimination. Yeah. Yes, yes. So question number 20 is C. See, uh, just before uh, proceeding to 21, uh, please remember 21 to 30 in B set is 11 to 20 in A series and in C series it is 81 to 90 and in D series it is 71 to 80. D series is 71 to 80, C series is 81 to 90 and A series it is 11 to 20. So question number 21 over to Manish. 
Okay, so before I, you know, start giving explanation to question number 21, one very interesting thing what we found in this year paper that uh, in some of the questions we can, you know, apply elimination rule and easily can get the right or correct option. But this time in some question they have framed the question very differently where there are pairs given and then you have been asked to identify that how many pairs given are correctly matched. Only one pair, two pairs, three pairs. So there the difficulty is until and unless you know everything, you will not be able to get the answer. So that you will find in some questions which will follow. So question number 21 is related with polity, constitution, governance. And in this question, four statements are given. And you have to judge the correctness of these statements. So the first statement is a factual one. And it's correct that it was the HN Sanyal Committee report on which Contempt of Court Act 1971 was passed. Question number two, a statement number two. The Constitution of India empowers Supreme Court and High Court to punish for contempt of themselves. This is again a correct statement. I hope all of you must be aware that under Article 129, Supreme Court is the court of records, whereas under Article 215, all high courts are also the court of records. And those which are court of records have the power to punish for their contempt. Okay, so statement 2 is absolutely correct. The statement 3 is wrong. The Constitution of India defines civil contempt and criminal contempt. Nowhere in the Constitution there is definition for civil contempt and criminal contempt. Rather, it is the Contempt of Court Act of 1971 in which explicitly the two terms have been defined. So statement 3 is wrong. Statement 4 that parliament is vested with the powers to make laws on the contempt of court. That is the reason why the parliament passed this contempt of court act 1971. So if you can correlate statement 1 and statement 4, you can judge on your own that statement 4 is correct. And therefore, the answer in this question is that statement 3 is wrong and the rest all other statements are correct. So the answer is B, Bombay, 1, 2 and 4. Next question, question number 22. Now, uh, this is an interesting question. You will find that different institute may give different answer. And why I am saying this? Because even among us, initially there was difference of opinion. But later on, there was a consensus that what should be the answer for this question. So when it says first statement, uh, that government law officers and legal firms are recognized as advocates. Uh, see, in general, legal firms cannot be recognized as advocates. So in the opening part of this sentence itself, mention of legal firms as recognized as advocates make this statement wrong. So there is no need unnecessarily to get into the complicated tail end part of this statement. Okay, so we will judge that the first statement is wrong. Second statement, bar councils have the power to lay down rules relating to legal education and recognition of law colleges. Now, had instead of bar council, councils, it would have been bar council of India, then this statement would have been correct. Since even in the states we have bar councils, okay, they have nothing to do with uh, legal education re regulation and recognition of law colleges. So both the statements in this particular questions are incorrect and therefore the answer is D, so, Delta. So in this particular case, the Bar Councils is the issue. But had it been Bar Council of India, there would not have any problem. So many people have missed out. Even we people missed out in the beginning. And later on we realized that it is Bar Councils and it is not Bar Council of India. So because of that Bar Councils, which are present in every state, we cannot, and state Bar Councils have no role in the legal education and recognition of law colleges. So both the statements are wrong. So neither one nor two. So D should be the answer. Yes. We will now move to question number 23, again from polity, and this question relates with constitutional amendment bill. Three statements are given related with constitutional amendment bill. 
So the first statement that a bill amending the constitution requires a prior recommendation of the president of India. This is wrong. No prior recommendation for introduction of constitution, a constitution amendment bill is required. Any member can introduce and recently one member introduced one constitutional amendment bill. That can be the reason why even, this question is there. Even uh, you know, private member's bill can be there or other private member also can introduce constitutional amendment. Any member from any that house is. of the two houses of parliament can introduce the constitution amendment bill. So first statement is wrong. Second statement, when a constitution amendment bill is presented to the president of India, it is obligatory for president of India to give his, uh, his or her assent. This statement is correct. President has no veto power on constitutional amendment bill. Once it is passed by the parliament, both houses of parliament, it is obligatory, it's mandatory for the president to give his or her assent. And you should, yeah, you should know one thing, that if president will try to, you know, uh, hold assent on constitutional amendment bill, which is passed separately by two houses of parliament, it means president is opting for a direct confrontation with parliament and he is exposing himself to the danger of being impeached. Okay, so that is also one thing which you should know. So statement two is correct. Statement three, a constitution amendment bill must be passed by both the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha by a special majority and there is no provision for joint sitting. So it, this is a bill where there is a special requirement that this bill should be passed by both the houses separately and there can never be deadlock or gridlock during the passage of bill between two houses of parliament and there is no need for joint sitting. So statement three is wrong and a different kind of a special majority is required. You know, so that is that is something. So statement two and three correct. The statement one is wrong. Answer for this is B, Bombay. And in fact, uh, there is no question of deadlock. If the other house rejects it, it's an end to the constitutional amendment bill. So, at that stage only the bill will lapse. Yeah. Question number 24. Okay. Consider the following. This is an interesting question. Okay. So, the first statement says that the constitution of India classifies ministers into four ranks. That is cabinet minister, minister of a state with independent charge, minister of a state and deputy minister. This classification is not in the scheme of constitution. In constitution you will find cabinet minister, minister of the state, but there is no mention of minister of the state with independent charge. It has emerged as a you know arrangement to balance between seniority and uh, competency and uh, most of the time minister of the state their constitutional status is of minister of state but no cabinet minister is appointed above them and that is why they have to run the ministry independently and this is the reason why the word minister of state independent charge but if you see oaths which are given in constitution there is a different oath for cabinet minister there is a different oath for minister of state and constitutional status of minister of state with independent charge is no way different than any other minister of state. So, first statement is wrong. Second statement that total number of ministers in union government including the prime minister shall not exceed 15% of the total number of uh, members in the Lok Sabha. This statement is correct. However, this was not in original constitution but uh, through an amendment in the constitution an upper cap was prescribed as far as size of council of ministers is concerned and that upper cap is that it should never exceed 15% of the total strength of the Lok Sabha, including Prime Minister. In fact, uh, statement number one, I just would like to add, most of the places it is mentioned only Council of Ministers. And only in the 44th Amendment Act, we even introduced the term Cabinet Minister into the Constitution. Otherwise, no classification. Everywhere it is mentioned as Cap uh, Council of Ministers. No yeah. classification. But uh, the, there is a different oath for cabinet yes. minister and different oath for minister of state. So, okay. So, on statement one, incorrect. Statement two, correct. The answer for this question is B. B. Bombay. Question number 25. Now, this is about exclusive powers of Lok Sabha. To ratify the declaration of emergency. Okay. No. Lok Sabha has exclusive power during withdrawal of emergency, not due for ratification of emergency. 
Now, second statement that to pass a motion of no confidence against Council of Minister, yes, no confidence motion can only be brought in Lok Sabha against the Council of Minister and if no confidence motion is passed, then it brings an end to the existence or life of the entire Council of Ministers and this is one of the cardinal principles of parliamentary democracy where Council of Ministers must be collectively responsible towards Lok Sabha. To impeach the President of India, motion is to be passed separately by both the Houses of Parliament with the special majority and that special majority is the toughest majority talked under the scheme of Indian Constitution. So the question is about exclusive powers of Lok Sabha. So what I would say that only second statement is what is correct, whereas to ratify declaration of emergency and to impeach the President of India that will not fall within the ambit of exclusive power of Lok Sabha. So the answer is B, Bombay. 26. Question number 26. Now, with reference to anti-defection law in India, consider the following statement. Two statements are given. And the first says that the law specifies that nominated legislature cannot join any political party within six months of being appointed to the House. Rather, other way around. If they have to join, they must join within six months. After six months, they cannot join. If they join after six months, that can attract, you know, anti-defection law and disqualification. So, first statement is wrong. Second statement that the law does not provide any time frame within which the presiding officer has to decide a defection case is absolutely correct. So, this is, you know, this is up to the, it is a prerogative of the presiding officer to take up the case for final decision based on, you know, his uh, availability. Okay, so second statement is correct. First is wrong. The answer for this question is B. Bombay, two only. Next, question number 27. Now, there are two statements given related with Attorney General. Okay, first statement says Attorney General of India and Solicitor General of India are the only officers of government who are allowed to participate in the meetings of Parliament of India. Now, this statement is wrong because of mention of Solicitor General of India within this. Let me put it like this. Article 76 of Indian Constitution talks about Attorney General and Attorney General is the only person who, even though is not the member of either House of the Parliament, but can participate during the proceedings of both houses of parliament with right to speak, but no right to vote. Okay. So, Solicitor General is appointed by President to assist Attorney General and in general, they assist Attorney General by appearing for Government of India in important cases where Attorney General for some reason cannot be present. Okay. So, this is because of use of Solicitor General of India in this statement makes this statement wrong. Second statement, according to Constitution of India, the Attorney General of India submits his resignation when government which appointed him resigns. Now, this is not mentioned in Constitution, but this is a tradition. And from where we picked this tradition? From British parliamentary system. But in British parliamentary system, the Attorney General is the part of British cabinet. In India, Attorney General, though is not the part of you know, cabinet, yet on some occasion he behaves like cabinet member and what he does that whenever there is change of guard at center, attorney general will also go and resign because the provision of the constitution is that attorney general holds office during the pleasure of the president. Okay, so this is why second statement is wrong because it says according to constitution of India. It's not according to constitution of India. It is based on tradition or practice. So, one and two both wrong. Answer is neither one nor two. That is D, Delta. Question number 28. With reference to writs issued by courts in India, consider the following. So, it is about mandamus and quo warrant to the two writs out of five which can be issued by Supreme Court and High Court under different articles of Indian Constitution. So, first says, Mandamus will not lie against a private organization unless it is entrusted with a public duty. Now, this statement is correct because 
public duty is a mandatory thing for issuing of the writ of mandamus. Mandamus means what? In Hindi it is known as Parmades. You are not doing your duty, so somebody's fundamental rights are being violated. Please do your duty the way you are supposed to do. Okay, so that is what is the nature of this writ. So, if a, if a company, private organization is not interested with public duty, how can it lie against them? So, first statement, absolutely correct. Second statement, mandamus will not lie against a company even though it may be a government company. Now, this is wrong. Government company will have the characteristic feature of public authority and there can be, you know, mandamus writ against them. And that is the reason why the statement 2 is wrong. Any public minded person can be a petitioner to move court to obtain the writ of Kyo Warrento. Kyo Warrento means when the court will ask the concerned that what is your authority. Okay. So any person can approach Supreme Court and can, you know, ask Supreme Court or High Court that you should ask this public authority that what is his authority with which he or she has done this. So a statement, you know, Two is wrong. A statement one and three correct. Answer is C. C. Calcutta one and three only. 28. Question number twenty-nine. Yeah. So uh, the question number twenty-nine is about Aishman Bharat Digital Mission. Okay. So uh, in this question, uh, B is the answer. Only three is correct. In fact, the it is a uh, private and public hospitals must adopt it. Uh, it is not there. Only you know uh, which is an M panel. Uh, after uh, uh, Ansuman Bharat Digital Mission Ayushman. has given Ayushman, sorry, has given a call to private and public hospital to adopt it, but yes. it's not must. And must. So had must not not been there, then this would have been correct. Yes. First statement. So uh, that is correct. Uh, first statement is wrong. Then uh, you know the uh, so answer is you know twenty nine, right? Twenty nine is B. So only three is there. As it aims to achieve universal health coverage. Every citizen of India should be part of it ultimately. Again, Aishman Bharat uh, Digital Mission, uh, there is no specific mention about every citizen of India should be part of it ultimately because Aishman Bharat is an idea to help the poor. Not every citizen specifically mentioned about that. Because of these uh, reasons, 1 and 2 cannot be termed as correct. Only 3 statement is correct, so answer should be B. And uh, question number 30 is once again, Back okay, to so quality. There are, uh, would you just, uh, okay. So there are four statements in this question related with deputy speaker of the Lok Sabha and you have to judge the correctness. Okay. And again, for many months now, we are not seeing a deputy speaker in our Lok Sabha and this is the reason why they have asked a question. You have to understand this that those constitutional offices which are in news for some or other region, on that they are asking question from polity. Yeah. And not many articles were published for perhaps for the first time in the history of parliament we have seen such a long duration in our Lok Sabha where there is no deputy speaker. So what is the first statement? As per rules of procedure and conduct of business in the Lok Sabha, the election of deputy speaker shall be held on such date as the speaker may fix. This is absolutely correct. It is the speaker of the Lok Sabha who has to fix the date for election of the deputy speaker. Then the second statement, there is a mandatory provision that the election of candidate as deputy speaker of Lok Sabha shall be from either the principal opposition party or the ruling party. No, there is no mandatory provision. There is a practice that the speaker is from treasury and the deputy speaker is from opposition. But many a times we have seen the tradition not being followed whenever the relationship between treasury and opposition was, uh, you know, is, uh, very hostile. It is more like a British uh, you know, convention rather than, uh, you know, it is a, uh, you know, rule. There is no rule. and But now we have no deputy speaker only. Forget about, uh, uh, you know, the rule or anything. But we, the government is not even willing to have a deputy speaker in the first place right now. Anyway. Yes. So the statement two is wrong. A statement 3, Deputy Speaker has same power as a Speaker when presiding over the sitting of the House and no appeal lies against his ruling. This statement is absolutely correct. When he is in chair as presiding officer, he has all powers equivalent to Speaker of the Lok Sabha and whatever ruling is given by him 
to keep the house in order that ruling there cannot be any appeal against that ruling so statement 3 is absolutely correct the statement 4 the well established parliamentary practice regarding the appointment of deputy speaker that the motion is moved by the speaker duly seconded by the prime minister no okay normally you know what we see that it is prime minister who will move the motion which is seconded by the leader of opposition and sometimes we have seen prime minister requesting the leader of opposition in the house to move the motion which will be seconded by the prime minister so the speaker has no role as far as moving the motion for appointment of deputy speaker so statement 4 is wrong the statement 2 is wrong the statement 1 and 3 are correct the answer for this is a now alpha in fact one interesting thing is uh, even if you don't know 3 and 4 still you can get the answer yes. if you know question number 1 it's a statement 1 is correct and if you know 2 is wrong then we have only 1 and 3 as the option yes. <laughs> okay 1 is correct and uh, uh, you know 2 is wrong so d yes. and d is eliminated and then 1 is correct means we have only one option so in some of the questions we found that with one or two statement correctness you can directly reach to the correct option that possibility is there so coming to question number 31 uh, to 40 uh, in uh, b series it is in a series is 1 to 10 in c series it is 91 to 100 and in d series it is 51 to 60 so d it is 51 to 60 c it is 91 to 100 and uh, a it is 1 to 10 so it's about the economics now ajay will be answering more okay so we have here question number 31 rapid financing instrument and rapid credit facility now in this we can take the terms itself and you will get some logic behind what would be the right answer is that financing instruments More likely that uh, the answer would be B or C, D or C in this case. They were Asian Development Bank and World Bank. If for them these kind of instruments will not be as much used, right? Because they are giving loans and all for development purpose. Out of B and C also, because it is about rapid, means something which is urgent, immediately needed. So it should be some kind of crisis in the economy for which these are given. So the answer is likely to be B, and actually it is B. So by logic also you can solve some of these questions. Moving to question number thirty-two, which is uh, clear from the statement number two itself. If you look at the increase in the real effective exchange rate, indicates an improvement in trade competitiveness. Now, the very basic concept of real it tells you that now if it increases, it is going to bring down the trade competitiveness rather than increasing it. So, just by looking at statement two, you can answer this question. Statement one and statement three is correct, so answer will be C for that. other two statement in fact the third statement you can understand that there is a kind of a double whammy there because when the you know inflation it is increasing it is going to increase the near on one side and reduce the rear and so the divergence is going to increase between the two so those these two statements will be correct moving on to the next question so question number 32 c 32 yeah the answer for 32 is c question number 33 now this is a conceptual question basic but let's look into this Uh, C. Uh, if the inflation, the first statement, if the inflation is too high, the Reserve Bank of India is likely to buy government securities. Now, when the inflation is high, then there is money supply it increases, right? So, in order to absorb the liquidity from the market, the Reserve Bank of India it has to put the money in. Uh, it has to absorb the money. So, obviously, what it will do is that it is going to sell the government securities rather than buying the government securities. Okay. So, for over through the various types of operations. so first option in this case uh, will not be correct second option if the rupee is rapidly depreciating then if the rupee is depreciating it means that the value of rupee is going down with respect to dollar and dollar's value is going up means that the dollar is more in demand and when the dollar yeah if you know that question number upar statement is wrong yeah yeah that is that is why yeah yeah it's just that because this is a conceptual question so just we get into that that uh, if you are increasing the demand uh, more demand of the dollar so obviously the rbi is going to sell the dollars in the market right and the, similarly the third one is very clear because more demand for dollar will be there for investment purpose when the interest flow rates are being lowered so rbi is going to be induced to buy more dollars so b so answer will for this will be b 2 and 3 are correct question number 34 is very simple i'll not get into any explanation here this is a factual question both the statements are correct in this case it is uh, 
it is an initiative to support the low income countries with unsustainable debt. Question number 35. In case of question number 35 also about inflation index bonds which have been often in the news, you see that the third statement, the interest received as well as the capital gains on IIBs are not taxable. taxable. That statement itself is not correct. So on that basis itself you get the answer. Answer will be A in this case. In First fact, and second uh, statement I, I is correct. I would like to add, you know, in India nothing is free. Everything is taxed. The moment yes. you say something is not taxable, it is more likely to be wrong. The it statement is likely to, going to be wrong. You know, even senior citizens are taxed. So, for even in whatever concession we are giving, the senior citizens are also going right now, even railways and all. So, 100% this can be guessed also that it can be likely to be wrong. So, anyway, the third statement is wrong. Question number 36. In this case, the first statement anyhow is wrong. You see that they can sell their own goods in addition. Now you look at a number of examples like Amazon and all. Second statement, degree to which they can own big sellers on their platform is limited. This one is correct. So answer will be B in this case. Question number 30. First, first uh, there was a recently yeah. an issue hmm. related to Amazon. Yes, yes. When yes. they started selling their own goods, goods on, on and there were controversy generated related to that. And, and that is, I think, that's that's the reason why Reliance, right? they have yeah. asked the question. Question number 37 is about the real sector in the economy. So this again is a basic question if you understand what is real uh, sector in the economy. Real sector is all about where real transactions are happening. Real transactions in, in the economy that indicates where goods and services are produced or you know it's being transacted. So you see the question number first and second is about the physical goods and services. Third and fourth is about intangible instruments, right? So it's a commercial bank lending money to a trading company or a corporate body. So all such financial intangible transactions, both these statements will not be correct. Answer will be A in this case. First and second statements are correct. Moving to question number 38. Indirect transfers, as it has been in the news, there's mostly related to the foreign companies. So from there, you can deduce it to option number B and C. And just if you will even apply a bit of logic, right, what could be indirect transfers and where it will be applied, it shall be a foreign company transferring shares and such shares derive their substantial value assets located in India. So the option will answer for this will be D. Okay. Question number 39. 39 is again related to capital expenditure. Now this is one question where a lot of people have doubt related to the second statement. Uh, but let me make this clear that first and foremost the first statement is correct because when you are taking up new technology obviously it is going to help you to increase your production for future and make more profit, generate more revenue in future. So this is a kind of a capital expenditure because it is going to be a long term investment. Second statement, debt financing is considered capital expenditure is fine, which is mostly understood. A lot of people have confusion regarding the equity financing. Now what happens when equity financing is happening? You are bringing the cash and you're giving the equity out. Now where that money is going to be that itself, the cash itself is a kind of capital which is you're doing some kind of capital investment there. So the expenditure would be considered as part of capital expenditure only and therefore only first statement is correct. Answer for 39 would be A. And question number 40 with respect to Indian economy. Now this also is a very easy simple question. It's household financing obviously see a lot of mobilization of household financing whether it is through different types of provident from EPF, other, it is all channelized by the government. So basically government is borrowing from the people, so it is part of that. And dated security issues issued at market related rates in options from a large, it definitely forms a large component of internal debt. In fact, it's one of the biggest components of internal debt that is there. Yeah. So in that case, both the statements are correct. Answer for 40 would be C. Yeah, uh, from uh, question number 41 in our B series, uh, it is 41 to 50 in B series is 21 to 30 in A series, 71 to 80 in C series and 61 to 70 in D series. So once again, uh, the 41 to 50 in B is 61 to 70 in D, 71 to 80 in C and 31 to 40, sorry, uh, 21 to 30 in 21 to 30 in A series. So now in B series it is 41 to 50. Okay, so question number 41 from environment. Question number 41. Very easy question. Uh, among the following crops, which one is the most important anthropogenic source of both methane and nitrous oxide? The answer is B, rice. I hope you know that during rice cultivation, water logging in the field and you will find marshy area, swampy area in which we are cultivating rice. 
so that is one place from where methane will release and too much nitrogenous fertilizers are used you know for rice cultivation so even there is release of nitrous oxide so the answer is b bombay uh, question number 42, uh, now there is a series of questions in geography. Uh, just to give a comment on my opinion on geography, uh, compared to economy, compared to history questions or even topics of polity, I thought the questions of geography were relatively much more straighter. And if you had some basic insight into the concepts, and the pattern was almost more or less along the lines they've asked earlier, around wetlands, around some crops, this would have been an edge for many of you if you had a basic idea about geography. And that's one reason why we suggest that when you solve the question paper, do not solve the question sequentially, one after, two after, three after, four. For the first few minutes, if you can scan the paper very quickly, you could have directly come to a geography and a range of almost seven, eight questions were easily manageable with a bit of maps and some understanding of current affairs related agriculture. So I think... Uh, Geography questions were relatively straighter here. So question number 42 to start with. A system of rice intensification of cultivation and alternative uh, wetting and drying of rice fields practice. And what does it result in? So a rice in, uh, a system of rice intensification is actually an alternative to the green revolution model we followed in the 1960s. Uh, this method, SRI, uh, practiced in Madagascar, in China, in Thailand, uh, in Cambodia, the objective was to grow rice, improve productivity without using too much of water. It is a water efficient system. It does not require the flooding of fields like we have in the traditional rice cultivation. So, uh, and even the requirement of seeds is very, very less. Uh, I mean, almost one tenth of the seeds that we need in the traditional transplantation process. Statement one is correct. And any field which does not have too much of water logging or over-irrigation or wetlands will also not have too much of methane emissions. So one is correct, two is correct, and because less of water usage means there will be less of water pumping from the groundwater or from the canals, so even electricity consumption will be lesser. So question 42, I think, uh, is D, one, two, three. Question 43. Now, I don't think you could have uh, guessed this unless you know this is a part of some current affair development. We have this lake, uh, Fawiji, uh, Fawiji Bean. Uh, this is in uh, the western part, uh, southern part of Sahara. And uh, this has been going dry in Mali, yes. Now, one way of eliminating this, if you know a bit of geography, is Lake Victoria is too large and too deep to go dry. Lake Volta and Lake Largest. Obuta, these two lakes are dammed on the rivers and the lakes have been formed. Generally a river, a general lake formed because of damming of a river will dry the last. Whereas the lake Fajubin, this one was a natural lake and it has dried. The is, is the largest uh, man-made uh, Yes, yes. Uh, because of the la uh, dam Okosombo. Yeah. Okosombo dam, one of the big dam of uh, Africa, uh, river Volta, uh, the, on river Volta. Yeah. So that could not have dried. And Yoguta uh, is in Nigeria again. Nigeria, yes. Yoguta is in Nigeria, yes. yes. Uh, the Gandhi Kota ca Canyon of, uh, uh, of South India. Now, this again, I don't think you could have guessed it. This is a fact that you had to know. Question, Question number 44. Yeah. 44, the answer is Pennar. And I have noticed last couple of years, they have been asking questions on some of the southern rivers. Yeah. Uh, Peria River, Pala River, uh, Peneru River, Tungabhadra and Godavari. So I think it will be wise if you can cover the rivers of southern India a bit more detail. But this is called as the Grand Canyon yeah. of India. It is a, if you cannot go to a US to see Grand Canyon, I think we are supposed to go to Gandhi Kota to see this. I mean, it's almost like that, it seems. Very yes. interesting, picturesque place. Okay, let us visit as a cheaper version of Grand Canyon <laughs> of <laughs> the world, yes. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Next is question number 45. Uh, this again, I think, was a very straight question. Uh, you are supposed to know this much of facts about Indian physiography. Uh, Nokrek is in Meghalaya. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a peak and also an important uh, conservation site, a biosphere reserve. Uh, Nokrek, the highest of the Garo uh, hills also. It's in Meghalaya, not uh, Sikkim. Yes, yes. After uh, Shillong Peak, uh, Nokrek is among the highest. So it's in Meghalaya. 
Namcha Barwa is the eastern side, the limit of Himalayas on, in the east. You should not have got this uh, uh, mistake. And the only option left, Nanda Devi, part of Kumao. I think a very easy question. 45 is 2. So question 46. B, 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 B is the answer. B is the answer. 45 yes. is B. Yeah. Uh, 45, B is the answer. 2 only. Question 46. Uh, Levant term has been in news because of lot of developments in Lebanon, Syria, Israel. Levant word is a French origin word which means the east. So the eastern Mediterranean is called as the Levant. And uh, uh, it includes, I repeat, uh, Syria, Lebanon, Israel. Sometimes even Jordan is referred to part of Levant. And if you know, uh, the city of Beirut is often called as the Paris of the east. Mm. So Levant... That way is important. And in fact, uh, this is where uh, when the ISIS was coming up. Yes. In fact, they had this name, Levant, uh, you know, that uh, Islamic State of Levant also, they were talking for some time. Yes, and yes. And this is the most beautiful place in this region where fresh water is there. And you have that River Jordan. And the River Jordan is a beautiful sweet water region. And it is the most sought after maximum fighting in history, if you look. Because of happened, this river. Yeah, because of this river and the fresh water is available here. And uh, it is, and where we have the, some of the best oranges also. I mean, Levant oranges. Yes, Levant oranges. Jaffa oranges, Jaffa oranges of Israel. <laughs> in fact, in the Middle East, the Arab world, Levant has the best climate. Yes. And that's why historically this has been an area of uh, very old civilization. And uh, all Damascus, Abrahamic, Abrahamic religion started here. <laughs> yes, from the Levant region. <laughs> yes. Correct. Correct. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, question 47, again, not much of discussion. It's a fact you should have known. 47 is the, uh, 47. Yeah. 47 is C. Uh, 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 Azerbaijan is a Caucasian country. Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan. Between Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. So if you eliminate uh, Azerbaijan, the answer you have uh, to mark is 3, 4 and 5. Yes, yes. Okay. And Afghanistan news, you better know oh, the countries uh, of Central Asia. Yeah. Now question 48 is very uh, interesting because... Uh, uh, some of us did make a mistake. On the first look, monazite as rare earth is correct. It has thorium is correct. It is occurring in the coastal region is correct. But the trap here is the entire Indian coastal sands of India. Mm. Monazite is not found in all the coasts of India. There are some traces in Gujarat and Daman. But Maharashtra and Karnataka almost have no monazite. Yeah. And coast. Yes, almost no monazite. Although they have... The other rare earths, yes, yes. they have ilmenite, yes. uh, they have got rutile, Ilimanite. but not monazite. Yeah. So, I think that was the trap. But Gujarat and Daman region have some monazite. The main monazite regions are from Keral, you move okay, eastwards. Yes. Okay, so Keral, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha. Up till Odisha. Uh, Odisha, yes. So, that belt has, and Odisha has one of the largest uh, processing center for uh, rare earths also. And in so fact, even in naturally Jhar occurring monazite in is Jhar also Khan. found in some river beds of Jharkhand. And, in Jhar uh, Khan, yes. and again, you know, this question uh, is because of the current affairs also a bit. Because a lot of illegal mining in Tamil Nadu is going on. Court cases are going on. Yes. Uh, you know, high court, Madras high court cases are going on. And it is accused yes. that, you know, some of the, in the name of exporting other rare earths, we are actually illegally, the private firms are exporting uh, monazite, monazite also. So that is why it is in news. Otherwise, monazite cannot be exported. And this is the reason why the fourth statement. Yeah, the strategic mineral. Only can process and export monazite. Yeah. Correct. In fact, me and sir had a good fight to claim this question. <laughs> I thought it was geography and sir kept saying it's no, it's current affairs. <laughs> so I, I ultimately managed to con it for myself. Yes. So monazite sand, the answer is a C uh, because uh, statement number, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, the answer is so B. The answer yeah, is B because B, B statement bomb number bomb. 3 is yeah. wrong. Yeah. Okay, 1, 2 and 4 are correct. Yeah. Uh, 49. Question 49. Again, I think I should not be discussing at all. Uh, the <laughs> longest day of the year, yeah, 21st of June, June, the summer solstice. And I hope all of you know, without GS also, 21st of June is second half of the month. So nothing to discuss here, <laughs> this state question. Uh, question number 50. Now, wetland question is a recurring question almost in every year. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. In fact, some of the videos we shared before the prelims, we have discussed uh, Sashtam Kota Lake of Tamil Nadu. So, no, wetland... No, 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 Sashtam Kota Lake. No, no, we have discussed that. We have discussed, that. Ah, we have discussed ah. that in some of the previous uh, okay. lectures. But yes, the answer, answer in this uh, is 
द रेणुका लेक इन हिमाचल प्रदेश इज करेक्ट एंड रुद्र सागर लेक इन त्रिपुरा इज करेक्ट so only 2 and 3 is correct and not 1 and 4 yeah. but interesting the wetland the, is in jammu and kashmir jammu kashmir yes and sastham kota holds a very special distinction of in kerala yeah, yeah one of the lake in coastal part which is a fresh water lake yeah yes yes unlike vembanad and unlike ashtamudi which are uh, salt water lagoons yeah uh, sastham uh, kota lake has fresh water yes so that's an important uh, fact thank you sir so the answer for this but yes this another one of those question new form of question mm. where they ask in terms of one pair correct two pairs so this is something new for all of us anyways <laughs> the answer is b here only two of them yeah is correct now from 51 just to just to add uh, 51 to uh, 60 in b series is 91 to 100 in a and in c series it is 1 to 10 and in d series it is 41 to 50 okay i am repeating 41 to 15 D series, C series is 1 to 10, and A series it is 91 to 100. So question number 51, uh, Shabir. Alok, ah, Alok, okay. Now finally, Alok is getting a chance to, uh, you know, participate because yes. see, you know, now uh, he starts. Sir, yes. But sir, our panel is loaded with those geography experts. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we will not, I will not interfere in your uh, answers because I have very least understanding of history, right? Right, now, you know? sir. <laughs> so, uh, see, uh, in question number 51, see, uh, they are asking this kind of question. If you are aware, uh, they have asked Dhauli, they have asked Jaugad, they have asked Edagodi. So, they have already asked these questions. So, this question cannot be considered as a complicated question. Dhauli, of course, in Odisha, and you all know that all these are major rock edict sites related to Ashoka, right? So, Dhauli is in Odisha, it is correct. Edagodi is in Andhra Pradesh, Anandpur district, it is correct. Jaugad is also in Odisha, Ganjam district. So, Jaugad is in Odisha and Kalsi is in Dehradun, Uttarakhand. So, two, pair, two pairs, only two pairs correct. So, this is easy question. We can easily handle it. And they have followed the general pattern. So, answer would be B. Answer would be B. Now, coming to question number 52. In 52, again they are following the trend, right? Last year also they asked some question related to a regional kingdom of early medieval India. So this time also they are continuing with this trend. And we are always highlighting some important rulers, important places related to early medieval period. So see Nannuk, you can relate with Chandelas. You can relate Jai Sakti also with Chandelas. So Jai Sakti, this pair is not, you can say, properly matched, right? Then the third Nag Bhatt, you all know, Gurjar Pratihar, it is correctly matched. And Bhoj, you all know, you have one Bhoj Pratihar, you have one Bhoj Parmar, but they are giving Rashtrakut, so this uh, pair is not correct. So we can go for uh, B again, Bombay, so only two pairs matched. Fine, now coming to question number 53. See, in question number 53 also, I would say that they are following the trend. In main examination also, they have asked this question uh, related to Sangam literature. They had asked questions related to the society, economy of Sangam literature. You all know that the Sangam literature is a Tamil literature. And uh, probably you all know that Etu Toggai, right, Patu Patu, Padinen Kilaknakku, Siva Vijintamani, Silva Vigaram, Mani Meghalai, all those texts. So they are mentioning about material culture. They are mentioning about their war and love. They are mentioning about their religion. Right. But here you will see that statement one is saying Sangam poems are devoid of any reference to material culture. So this is wrong. Why we should consider statement number B as correct? Because in Tolka PM they have mentioned right four you know categories and these four categories are considered as the four varnas. They are actually related to the Varna system. So generally we consider those division of Tolka PM as social classification of Varna. So in that context, statement B can be considered as the correct statement. So answer of this question would be B. Fine. Then coming to question number 54. 
This question is, of course, it's a very tough question, very difficult question to handle, factual. So this, you can guess even this question, why? Because if you have some idea, during Akbar period only, this translation department was introduced, right? So they started translating some popular, you know, Sanskrit book, translating Sanskrit book into Persian. If you have some idea, you have idea about Badawini, you have idea about Phaiji. So, Yog Basish was also translated into Persian by Nijamuddin, Panipati, right, during the period of Akbar. Even if you don't know this fact, you can guess Akbar because translation department was introduced during this period. So, even this question can be handled. I could have answered this, sir, by elimination. Aurangzeb yes. is impossible. Yes. Humayu, <laughs> uh, where he survived? Yes. Uh, he had no hmm. time for all cultural activities. Hmm. And Shah Jahan was busy making Taj Mahal. Yes, yes. <laughs> so only person left who could do this was Akbar. Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. Anyone, anyone. Anyone. What is right? Yes. <laughs> Without knowing his way. Without knowing <laughs> Yes. And now coming to uh, next question, question number uh, 55. Yes. So in question number 55 is current affairs based question, right? So we had world's second tallest statue, statue of equality, right, in uh, Hyderabad. And this was related to Ramanuja charge. And if you have some idea about the development of Vedanta, you have one very popular name called Sankarachar, who is related to Odwet. But Ramanuja charge, you all know, he added Vishist to Odwet. So when he added Vishist to Odwet, he started talking about not Gyan Marg, but Bhakti Marg. So when you know that Ramanuja charge is related to Bhakti, you can easily guess the answer. So the answer of this question would be, the best means of salvation was devotion. Fine. So answer of this question would be A. This is current affairs based culture. Fine. So A would be the right answer. Then coming to question number 56. See, this is also current affairs based question. It was in news also. So Prime Minister when inaugurated this new circuit house, right, uh, near Somnath temple. So this was covered by Indian Express and Hindu. So Somnath temple is one of the Jyotera Ling shrines. It is correct. Description of Somnath temple was given by al -Biruni. This is also correct. But the Pran Pratistha, what is called installation of the temple, it was actually done by Rajendra Prasad, not Radha Krishnan. So third would be wrong. So we can go for uh, A. So option A would be the correct option. So 56A. Now 57. Yeah, question number 57 is about the role of B cells and T cells in the human body. So answer is D uh, in because, uh, you know, it is, uh, this is the one, uh, you know, 57, it says that B cells are the type of cell that produce antibodies to fight bacteria and viruses. So it's a straightforward, simple question. If you know something about B cells and T cells, we can easily answer. They produce, they protect the body from the disease caused by the pathogens. So D is the answer. So coming to 58, question number uh, 58, again answer is D, D for Delhi. Here they are asking about nanoparticles. The first statement says other than those made by humans, nanoparticles do not exist in nature. That is not correct. In fact, nanoparticles are existing in nature because of tides, maybe, you know, even uh, volcanic activity. There are naturally occurring nanoparticles also. So the first statement is wrong. Second statement, nanoparticles has, have some metallic oxides that are used in the manner of some cosmetics. Yes, nanoparticles are elaborately used. Even in toothpaste, it is used. So, nanoparticles can be there in, uh, you know, in the cosmetics. And also, nanoparticles have some commercial products which enter the environment are unsafe for humans. It is 100% correct. In fact, there is a nanoparticle pollution. It is a big concern. It is a big hazard today. And so much of uh, discussion and debate is going on. So, 2 and 3 are correct. So, answer should be D here. First statement saying that it is not formed, you know, only by humans, not formed in, uh, found in nature is wrong. So, 2 and 3 are correct. So, answer should be D. Coming to 59. Again, this is, this can be some idea of DNA barcoding. If you have, you can easily manage, you know, distinguish among species uh, that look alike, identify undesirable animals or plant material in processed foods. This can be done. But, DNA barcoding cannot be used for assessing the age of the plant or an animal. So, 2 and 3 are correct. So, answer should be D again in question number 59. Question number 60 uh, about acid rain. 
Manish, you want to say? Yeah. Ah, it, it is very easy. That is why I want you to say. Okay. <laughs> B is the answer. B is the answer. Acid rain, you know very well that when there is excessively high content of nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide in the rain, that makes the, you know, precipitation acidic with pH value 5.6 and below. Then it falls uh, in the category of acid rain. So the answer for this would be uh, P. 2 and 4, nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide. You can eliminate very easily. Carbon monoxide and ozone can be eliminated very easily. Mm. Yeah. So, the answer will be P. Okay. If you eliminate 1 and 2. No. Sorry. 1 and 3. Ah, one the and answer three. will be 2 and 4, yeah. Bombay. Yeah. So, Excess of which. Yeah. yeah. Coming from question number 61 again. 61, please remember. In 61 in B. Uh, and it is... Uh, uh, in A series, it is 81 to 90, and uh, C series, it is 11 to 20, and D series is 21 to 30. So, D series 21 to 30, C series 11 to 20, and A series is 81 to 90. So, question number 61. High clouds. Okay. Uh, now, this is something uh, I don't think you could have guessed. Uh, it was safest to leave this question uh, because the role of clouds in global warming has been of uh, concern and debate. What do clouds do? Uh, without discussing too much, the statements actually have been reversed. That's why both the statements are wrong. Uh, high clouds actually result in warming of the earth because high clouds allow for radiation to enter. Uh, high clouds allow the radiations to get transmitted. There is low cloud on the other hand, okay, they are responsible for cooling of the earth because low clouds have higher albedos. The statement has been reversed. The answer is D, neither 1 nor 2. Yeah. Question number 62 about uh, uh, Bidi Bidi. Uh, it's the largest refugee settlement in northwestern Uganda. Question number 62. 62 is about uh, uh, BDBD. It's the largest refu it's a refugee settlement not in northwest Kenya. It is in Uganda and it is a conflict zone uh, in this region because of the, you know, the, the Sudan, the South Sudan issue and all. So, first statement is wrong. Second statement, some people who fled from South Sudan civil war live in BDBD. Yes. In fact, as I told you, this is the largest refugee settlement anywhere in the world for the last couple of years because of the civil war in Sudan and South Sudan region. So, second statement is correct. And the third statement, some people who fled from civil war in Somalia live in the Dadaab refugee complex in Kenya. That is correct. So, 2 and 3 are correct. So, in answer 62, answer is C. 2 and 3 are correct. Similarly, question number 63, uh, it is question about the Turkic states. These Turkic states were formed in 2009 where Turkic language is being used. Okay. So, in that uh, you know, if you look that way, Azerbaijan and Uzbekistan will come into picture. These two are correct. In fact, you know, other countries which are speaking the Turkic language or the Turkic state, they are Turkey, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. So, Romania and Croatia. And, you know, in fact, by you can also apply a bit of uh, this thing. So, Armenia is Armenian language is, you know, different from that is why they have a lot of fight between uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan also. So, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, 2 and 5 are here and plus Turkey, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan would have been there. So, answer should be C. 63, answer is C. Question number uh, 64 about the uh, solar park. Manish. Yes, so this is a factual question and you can even say that it is from current affairs. So, it says, first description says Gujarat has the largest solar park in uh, India. This statement is wrong. The largest solar park of the country is Bhatla and that Bhatla is in Jodhpur, Rajasthan. So, Rajasthan is the Indian state which has got the largest solar park, uh, not Gujarat. So, first statement wrong. Second says Kerala has fully solar powered international airport. Absolutely correct. That is Kochi International Right, Kochi International Airport. This is, in fact, world's first. Yeah, it's world's first fully solar. fully solar powered international airport. So that is there. Third statement says Goa has the largest 
floating solar photovoltaic project in India. Now, this statement is wrong. The largest solar photovoltaic project is in uh, Andhra Pradesh. It is in Simhadri. NTPC is owning it. Okay, so Andhra Pradesh has the largest solar photovoltaic yeah, so project. So, one and three wrong. are wrong. Two correct. So, answer is B, Bombay. Yeah, 65. Question 65 uh, from Anklos. Uh, I think most of us know uh, some of the facts that uh, territorial limit is still 12 nautical miles from the baseline. Statement 1 is correct. Uh, concept of innocent passage where all vessels, military and also commercial freight vessels are allowed irrespective of whether the country is landlocked or has a coast or not. It is open for navigation okay, for all. Now, question number, th the statement number three was a bit of a bother because uh, uh, the, the UNCLOS 83 agreement says that uh, EZ is up to 20 nautical miles, but it does allow for the country to extend to 150 nautical miles in terms of resources. So, countries that have a very broad uh, continental shelf are given additional 150 nautical miles, but 150 nautical miles. But the catch here is the additional 150 nautical miles is not called as EEZ. The countries have rights to use the resources, but technically the additional 150 nautical miles is not called as the EEZ. So the statement 3 is also correct. In fact, so, uh, yes. jurisdiction wise, EEZ is up to 200 nautical miles, but if a littoral state has very broad continental self and Continental self, not geographically. Yes, that's okay. very important. Yes. So then it can have rights for additional 150 nautical miles to exploit resources in the seabed and in the waters. waters. Yes. But it will not be treated as easy. No, it, it will not be treated. Jurisdiction wise, it's only up till 200 nautical Nautical. miles. But rights can be extended beyond 200 nautical miles only in case there is very broad continental self along the littoral state. And just to add one fact, the definition of continental shelf under UNCLOS is different from what we know in geology or geography. <laughs> yeah. In in so UNCLOS, so the continental shelf includes the continental slope and continental rise also, yeah. which technically or geologically is not the shelf. In, in fact, geologically, we say 185 meters. Yes. Up yes. to 185 meters is the continental shelf, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, so answer all the three statements are correct. Correct. D, uh, D, D is the answer. Yeah. D is the answer. Question number 66 about the Senkaku Islands. That is a dispute between China and Japan. It can be termed as a uh, current affairs question. Answer is B. Because, you know, this is something uh, which is uh, uh, fighting or there is a fight between, uh, you know, China and Japan. And Japan is holding it and China is claiming. And uh, this is uh, something, of course, last couple of years I did not see much uh, in, in news. But it is something uh, which is an ongoing dispute. As long as China and Japan are there, the dispute also will be there. So, uh, any time it can come up. So, uh, the Sengaku Islands, B is the answer. 66 is B. And coming to 67 question. Again, which are the reasons being in news recently. So, in fact, uh, 2, 3 and 4, 3 pairs are in news. Tunisia, suspension of the parliament by the president, that is true. Lebanon, severe and prolonged economic depression is going on, that is true. One of the cheapest, uh, I know, their, their currency has been so devalued right now. Some people were saying that if you want to travel to some foreign country, Lebanon is the right place to go. Because, you know, a one, a one dollar can give, I think, around... Uh, more, you know, more than 1,000 uh, Lebanese currency. And so, you know, it's very, very cheap, damn cheap. I was watching a video also recently. If you have, uh, you know, Indian rupee, 100 also. 500 means you can have a lavish uh, one day in Lebanon, it seems. Anyway. The problem is you not <laughs> can come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that could be the reason, but otherwise, Lebanon, good. Uh, Guinea again. Uh, Guinea is a country where suspension constitution, uh, suspension constitution and uh, the government by military has happened last year, 2021. So these three, Chad setting up a permanent military base in China, nothing of that would have happened till now. That is not in news. So two, three and four are correct. So three pairs. So C is the answer in this particular case. And then question number 68. Again, region often mentioned in news. Anatolia is in Turkey. Amhara is in Ethiopia. 
both are hundred percent correct. But Cabo Delgado, this is in Mozambique. It is not uh, in Spain, and Catalonia is in Spain, but not in Italy. So three and four are wrong. Only two pairs are correct. So the you know, answer is B. B for Bombay in uh, in a sixty-eight question. So and now we got a new format of MCQ. Yeah. That how many pairs even are correctly <laughs> so matched? So we will have to create new questions now yeah. for the coming <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. Question number sixty-nine, Manish. I think you will have to answer that. Yeah. About the wildlife. Sixty-nine. Yeah. With reference to Indian laws about wildlife protection, consider the following statement. So, wildlife, uh, wild animals are sole property of the government. Now, this uh, statement is correct based on recent judgment given by Mumbai High Court. Okay, so uh, precisely this was the statement which was in the judgment. So, the first statement is correct. Second statement: When a wild animal is declared product protected. Such animal is entitled for equal protection, whether it is found in protected area or outside. Now, first is correct. Second and third are also in some way correct, but we have to choose the best answer. So, see, when a wild animal is declared protected, such animal is entitled for equal protection, whether it is found in protected area or outside. uh i was reading one article in hindu where this statement is given that they have, are entitled for equal protection whether it is found in protected area or outside however if you go by logic there is varying degree of protection even within protected area and definitely between protected area and outside area but even then we will consider this statement to be correct because this statement finds explicit mention in one of the articles published in the hindu newspaper so on that basis we can judge it correct in, okay in fact uh, manish in this question 1 2 3 all the three are correct is not there uh -huh. so even three is to some extent is correct because apprehension, apprehension of a protected wild animal becoming a danger to human life is sufficient ground for its capture or killing okay so but again but again in this also suppose a, a tiger is uh, you know is a potential danger to human life but if it is not killed anybody Uh, it is may not be sufficient alone, but generally, yes, it is. It can be captured or killing. Killing may not be there, but it definitely can be captured if it is found outside. But that way, if you look, it is also so, correct. Means if we give very liberal interpretation to what is mentioned in statement two, then it appears to be wrong. And if we give liberal interpretation to three, it appears to be correct. correct. But we have to go by you know a one and two. Based on the statement in Hindu article, we will consider statement two correct, and we cannot give liberal interpretation to three because we don't have option with yeah. all three statements are correct. So yeah. answer from our side will be yes. A one and two. In fact, had there been one, two, and three, we would have gone for one, two, and three. Yes, so, but unfortunately or fortunately, that is not there. So one and two, A is the answer. So that is about sixty-nine. Question number seventy. Uh, it is a straightforward question. Which organism is known as cultivator of fungi? And in fact, so many articles. Of course, we you could not have been guessing this kind of a question. Uh, after seeing the question, if you search in the internet, you will find so many articles about that. So A is the answer, and is the answer here, which are known as cultivators of fungi. So question number seventy-one, seventy-one to eighty. Uh, it is in A series. It is sixty-one to seventy, and in C series, it is thirty-one to forty. And in D series it is 11 to 20. So D it is 11 to 20. C it is 31 to 40. And in A it is 61 to 70. So question number, uh, you know, in in our case 71, uh, 71 to 80. Yeah, 71 is economics. So uh, you can. Ajay. Question number 71. Talks about. Site monetary policy of the Federal Reserve, right? So, site monetary policy is something where the government is trying to suppress expenditure, so the growth will get affected, and because of that, obviously, it will not be a good scenario for the capital to sustain it. There will be flight of capital. In, in, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, Ajay, in this case, if there is a tight monetary policy in US, means you know they will increase the uh, interest rates, and from uh, countries like India, it will yes, it, it will, will fly. fly. Okay, the capital exactly. flight will be there. Yes, yeah. Yes. So the first statement and the second statement is also correct. 
because uh, again the situation that arises which makes it further more you know adverse for those firms because of the increase in the interest cost so first and second statement is correct and third one the evaluation of domestic currency it will rather increase the currency risk rather yeah. than decreasing so the answer will be a for this yeah one and question two. one and two answer is a the next question is related to geography yeah it is about the uh, tea producing states and again in this particular question we have to be very careful in a generally known as tea producing states if you look at the general 98% of the tea being produced from four states it is assam west bengal tamil nadu and kerala so if you go by that logic uh, you know only kerala is mentioned but definitely himachal and tripura are also seen as the top 10 states the top 10 tea producing states so if you go by this logic some of you may say even in andhra pradesh some tea is produced there no doubt regarding this but if you go by the question where generally known as tea producing state then i think we will go for c as the answer only three states andhra we will not yeah. so we, if yeah. if we go by the data published by tea board of india then andhra pradesh is not there in top 10 tea producing states in india for the year 2020 okay so other than the four states which sir said uh, we are producing tea in uh, some northeastern states like tripura manipur nagaland as well and we are producing some tea in himachal pradesh and uttarakhand okay so these are the uh, states where we are producing but primarily we are producing tea in assam and west bengal west, and even in west bengal darjeeling area then tamil nadu and kerala yeah so in this we will go for uh, only, only three states three states that is c c yeah next question yeah next question 73 is question number 73 now uh, these are few of few you know question in sequence are very easy factual questions so first statement obviously credit rating agency it's regulated by sebi and not by rbi the other two statements are correct so answer will be b for this 2 and 3 question number 74 again you see that uh, whatever has been happening of late also with respect to appointment of the chairman of bank board bureau like you know the rai was also appointed as chairman of bank board bureau and this was a lot of controversy was there so definitely the first option is not correct second and third option are definitely the functions of the bank uh, banks board bureau so the answer for this will be b 2 and 3 3 yeah. question number 75 now you can again apply some logic here convertible bonds so there is an option when you are changing exchanging the bond for equity and obviously on one one way your interests are going to be better served so on the other hand it needs to be compensated so it's going to pay you a lower rate of interest yeah. and the second option is also correct the option of convert it is uh, to convert the uh, the bond into equity is definitely an indexation to rising consumer prices is also taken into consideration so answer for 75 is c both 1 and 2 yeah Question, question number 76 uh, yeah it i can answer that because asian infrastructure investment bank this is a bank uh, which is initiated by china and india so we are definitely one of the founder members of it but missile technology control regime we were not there but after our normalizing our relationship with the us and the western world we finally managed to become a member of the mtcr also and shanghai cooperation organization we were fighting or rather we were confused whether to join or not finally in 2017 we entered along with pakistan so all the three organizations india is a member right now so uh, you know all the d should be the answer uh, d for delhi so 1 2 3 all the three india is india is a member now coming to the next question about vietnam interesting question say that is why you know we need to have some general idea about the countries also vietnam is one of the fastest growing economies in the world no doubt but vietnam is led by a multi party political system is entirely wrong in fact it is a single party some it is a vestige of communist party is still there and uh, vietnam is led by a single party so uh, option 2 is wrong then vietnam's economic growth is linked to its integration with global supply chains and focus on export 100% correct for a long time vietnam's low la labor costs and stable exchange rates have attracted global manufacturers that is also correct but uh, in then vietnam has the most productive e service sector in the indo pacific region so that may not be so question number you know this is 77 right yes sir uh, question number 77 c is the answer so 1 3 and 4 is the answer in fact 2 and 5 are not correct the most productive e service sector and all it is very difficult to say it is not there 
you know, 1, 3 and 4 is the right. And again, the options are given such a way that, you know, uh, you know, if 4 and 5, even, even if you say 5 is there, no option for that. So, that way we, can, we are saved from this. So, uh, C is the answer. And uh, then, uh, price 78. Yeah. I think this is very clear. The answer will be D for this. Yeah. Reserve Bank, Bank of India. India. Yeah. I think that's all with respect to economics. Yeah. Uh, this 79 is science. Yeah. Non uh, fungible tokens, NFTs. So, in fact, uh, question number 79, A is the answer. 1 and 2 are correct. In fact, you know, they, the only problem in this kind of a, you know, this, uh, this third statement is they can be traded. This NFTs can be traded, no doubt regarding this. Uh, but not at equivalency. It can be traded not at equivalency. But here the statement says they can be traded or exchanged at equivalency and therefore can be used as a medium of commercial transaction. In fact, uh, and uh, this is the most fundamental uh, difference between the other blockchains and this one. This is the uh, NFT and the Bitcoin. The main difference is uh, in NFT cannot be traded at equivalency whereas uh, in a Bitcoin can be traded at equivalency. So, 1 and 2 are correct, 3 is wrong, so answer is A, 79, answer is A. And uh, 80 is a geography yeah, question. 80, uh, uh, Ghat Prabha is in Karnataka, not Telangana. Yeah. Gandhi Sagar is right, it yeah. is in Madhya Pradesh. Indra Sagar again is in Madhya Pradesh, it's part of the Narmada project, not Andhra Pradesh. And Maithon Dam, one of the four large dams under Damodar Valley Corporation. So, Maithon on the Damodar system in Jharkhand. I think this is an easy question, which most of them would have got wrong because this question is asking which is not correctly not matched. <laughs> because all the other questions uh, have been around which have been correctly matched. The answer is C. Uh, only three pairs are not correct. Mm. But I'm not surprised if people would have marked A. Mm. Okay, only one pair is. Yeah. Even while marking, we we also we I also, also mark wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so answer is C. The eighty is C. Only three pairs are incorrect. Yeah, coming to eighty-one, eighty-one to ninety in our B series. In A series, it is fifty-one to sixty, and in C series, it is forty-one to fifty, and in D series, it is thirty-one to forty. So eighty-one to ninety in B series is thirty-one to forty in D. 41 to 50 in C, 51 to 60 in A. So question number 81. And uh, Government of India Act. You can... Yeah, uh, Manish sir can also do this, uh, but yeah. it's a <laughs> easy question. I can also yes. claim and see the way they placed it. They are also suggesting that it is history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Along with so, history. Yes. So, uh, this is a very simple question, but you have to uh, apply because, see, uh, this was the reason for non-cooperation movement, the division between reserved and transferred subject. And as they were not satisfied with this division, it led to reaction, and this reaction paved the way for non-cooperation movement. And uh, only thing here you can concentrate is local self-government. So, local self-government was, of course, the part of transferred subject, but what you can do without finance, what you can do without administration of justice or police. So they were actually keeping the reserved subject, right? It has a reserved subject. So answer of this question would be a C. As they're asking which of the following were treated as a reserved subject, would be, it would be 1, 3, and 4. So yes. C would be the right answer. And if we go by the, you know, 4 given below, then it is making uh, the task easier. Because uh, law and justice, uh, definitely they will not, they will be keeping in the reserved list, they will not transfer police yes. anyway. There was some confusion between local self-government and land revenue, but there was no such option as such. So that is what very uh, precisely we can make out that uh, the three were in the reserved list and one local self-government was in the transferred list. Fine, so next question. Question number 82. Yeah. In medieval India, the term phanam. See, uh, this is uh, a tough question, but they are asking some complicated, right, you know, terms related to ancient and medieval India. And this term phanam is very popular term during the South India, the Chola period. So the phanam 
uh, you know the meaning is coins silver or gold coins so phanam uh, answer would be coins so b would be the right answer then next question question number 83 in question number 83 consider the following freedom fighters see all these freedom fighters they all are revolutionaries but they are asking actively associated with the gadar party you all know gadar party was formed by lala hardeyal 1913 so so those people who were living in india but revolutionaries they were not associated with gadar party but those who were living outside they were associated with gadar party right so you have a list right those people related to gadar party and here ras bihari bos right was a key member right associated with gadar party so we can go for d three only so answer would be d three only now coming to question number 84 in question number 84 also yes manish sir it is also polity yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh with reference to the proposal of crips mission as you all know again as the defects of 1919 act was the reason for non cooperation movement the defects of crips mission was the reason for quit india yes. so they were not satisfied with this crips mission yes. why they were not satisfied with the crips mission second world war was going on and when the second world war was going on we were demanding some formula some you know some gift but they were not ready to give any gift they were repeating the same thing which they offered what we call august offer they were repeating the same thing see constituent assembly right here is the first you know statement also you can see august offer britishers accepted the demand for constituent assembly indirectly yes and in this proposal they accepted the demand directly where they talked about that how it yes. will be constituted so they accepted of course there was But one more question step. the catch is some of them may get confused with cabinet vision plan yes yes while reading the first state yes so it is as per crips proposal yes and uh, second statement what we popularly call in history provincial option actually this statement was for jinnah yeah. this statement was to divide the politics yes. so this is popularly called provincial option so this was given just to convince jinnah that we are with you we can yeah. give you pakistan So right. the first statement is wrong because yes, wrong. it says that constituent assembly would have members nominated, nominated. by provincial assembly as well as princely assembly. Yes. No, even in Crips mission, it was that members in will be elected from uh, provincial assemblies yes, indirectly. Yes. yes, yes. And princes will nominate. So yes. first statement is, is wrong. wrong. And the second statement we can consider correct. Correct. Right? Because, because they were allowed to yes, continue with their own. Yes. It was there was a provision that if you don't uh, want. then you will have to sign a separate treaty regarding your future with britishers and you can think of a new constitution for yourself and this second statement why we generally remember i told that you know it was related to what we call separation you yes. know partition yes so second Fine. is second correct. is wrong second, no, second is correct, is correct. And first, first is, is wrong so we can go for d d 2 on then question number 85 Uh, this question is uh, of course slightly typical but you know they are asking now some text buddhist text jaina text and the other text sangam text they are asking those who have some background of history they must be familiar with parishist parvan and tri sasti salakha purusha so when you are familiar with parishist parvan and tri sasti salakha purusha you can easily guess that these two are related to jaina so 2 and 4 these are jaina text and 1 and 3 these are buddhist text so we can go for in 85 we can go for b 2 and 4 these are right jaina text and you know parishist parvan and tri sasti salakha purusha right right they are very popular you must be knowing about hemchand so these two are very popular text jaina text so answer would be b then question number 86 in question number 86 again they are asking question related to historical person see uh, this question is again uh, complicated because these are not very popular names popular historical person aryadev right of course was a buddhist scholar he was a student of nagarjun if you 
रिमेंबर इवन महायानिज्म वॉज ऑल्सो डिवाइडेड सो आर्यदेव वॉज रिलेटेड टू वन ग्रुप ऑफ महायानिज्म सो आर्यदेव वॉज नॉट ए जैना स्कॉलर ही वॉज ए बुद्धिस्ट स्कॉलर सो दिस यू नो पेयर इज नॉट करेक्ट देन दिग्नाग कोर्स वॉज द बुद्धिस्ट स्कॉलर एंड ही वॉज रिलेटेड टू लॉजिक वट इज कॉल्ड हे टू वा दिग्नाग एंड द नाथ मुनि एंड ही इज पॉपुलरली कॉल्ड श्री रंग नाथ मुनि and he was a vaisnava scholar so two and three correctly matched so we can go for option c only two pairs in history and geography this format of question is more yes now uh, see coming to question number 87 this question you can think as a tough question but believe me again this area is very popular in general studies last year sir they asked a question regarding mongol invasion last year also during iltutmish period there was the invasion of changhez khan so when during iltutmish period there was the invasion of changhez khan first statement would be wrong the so, mongol invasion and uh, ashoka rock edicts these are, are popular areas city. yes popular and area city. yes so the first mongol invasion of india happened during the reign of jalaluddin khilji you can easily say no and mongol invasion was always a real problem for sultanat it was actually one of the reason for the downfall of sultanat right and the first invasion mongol was changhez invasion changhez ka and the last invasion was taimur invasion taimur lang invasion so first mongol invasion of india happened during jalaluddin khalji wrong during the reign of alauddin khalji one mongol assault marched up to delhi this information is not very popular but there was a man called kutlug khwaja he invaded and he besieged the city so this statement is correct then mohammed bin tughlaq temporarily lost portion of north west no so there was no right you know loss of any portion during mohammed bin tughlaq so third statement is also wrong so only two second statement right is correct so we can go for b two only fine so again we can go for next question 88. question number 88 see this question right uh, anyone can question that why they are asking this kind of question this fact is mentioned in vd mahajan and vd mahajan is a standard text for history optional right so those who have some idea about vd mahajan book they can easily guess that answer would be sayyad sayyads were called kuladara right those who were actually using this kind of cap this is very easy who are familiar with vd mahajan but i honestly believe that for general studies we cannot recommend sir vd mahajan yes, yes, yes. right so for probably for us it is easy but it is not very easy and you know in it is to leave such question yes yes and of course we have some term the main crime is not to know the crime is to guess and yes. mark the wrong one yes and the questions are difficult yes i left it and here there will be some confusion sir because there is a painting tradition also in india called kulahdar tradition चौरा पंचासिका ट्रेडिस तो दोज हु हैव गुड होल्ड नो नो गुड कमांड ऑवर कल्चर दे कैन मार्क अ पर्सन कैलीग्राफिक बट दैट वुड नॉट बी राइट आंसर आई वुड टीच स्टूडेंट्स टू कंसिडर हिस्ट्री ऑप्शनल नाउ हिस्ट्री सो सो आई थिंक हिस्ट्री शुड बी सीरियसली कंसिडर्ड यस अनदर कुला धारा इज कमिंग नेक्स्ट ईयर सो सो वी डी महाजन इज ऑन सो दिस इज द ब्यूटी ऑफ एल एस ए ज्योग्राफी ऑप्शनल टीचर इज रिकमेंडिंग राइट हिस्ट्री ऑप्शनल सो दिस काइंड ऑफ एटमोस्फेयर वी हैव हियर नोटिस एटी नाइन एट्टी नाइन क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर एट्टी नाइन अगेन दिस क्वेश्चन स्टेटमेंट एटी नाइन क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी नाइन यस this question statement number 1 is very difficult to handle see we are considering it as correct but it can be wrong it is not mentioned that the land was granted by gajpati ruler and as a student of history i can tell you that gajpati ruler were not present that time right so the dutch established their factories in odisha in the east coast but it was land granted by gajpati ruler it can be wrong but we just generally considering it as a correct second you can easily understand that it is the second statement is correct because albuquerque captured goa from bijapur sultanate in 1510 it is very simple then the english east india company established a factory at madras yes this is also correct they were granted by this land was granted by nayakas and you all know that the nayakas they were the representative of the 
विजयनगर एम्पायर सो द सेकेंड एंड थर्ड दीज आर टोटली करेक्ट वन कैन बी रॉन्ग इफ यू हैव मार्क ओनली टू एंड थ्री यू कैन बिलीव दैट यू कैन ऑल्सो बी करेक्ट बट वी आर गोइंग फॉर येस वी आर गोइंग फॉर डी वन राइट राइट वी आर गोइंग फॉर आर टू एंड थ्री करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट टू एंड थ्री सो statement 89 is uh, answer is d d for answer is d we are going for d but you can no, go for again you go the question no 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 89 we are going for d, d. yes that means all the three are correct no no, no one no, and one three. is correct they are they have sir actually uh, you know uh, wrong wrongly you know presented it yeah yeah they are uh, the typing, typing error in the question yeah, which we are showing on his screen one, d is 1 2 and 3 on yeah what is 1 yeah. 3 are correct So, look from your side. Answer is D. One, yes, two, and answer three. is D. We are All giving three are correct. One, two, and three. But I am giving you a hope that even if you have marked two and three, you can be correct because first statement technically Gajapati ruler we have not seen in our textbook, right? So if you have marked two and three also, don't think that you are wrong. Fine. So coming to next question, ninety. Ninety. Question number ninety. Can you show question number yes. nineteen? Yes. According to Kautilya's Arthashastra, <laughs> see this question uh, again is uh, a complicated question. But you know that Kautilya Arthashastra talked about different kind of slaves. Megasthenes, as a source, rejected slavery system in India. But Kautilya's Arthashastra, right? You know, Kautilya's Arthashastra gave you know mentioned a list of nine kind of slaves. suppose first a person could be a slave as a result of a judicial punishment a word is mentioned in kautilya's arth shastra dand pranit so this is correct second if a female slave bore her uh, master a son she was legally free so the, the term for this is grihja so there are many terms there are nine terms mentioned for it so we can go for again d 1 2 and 3 third statement again there is slight you know confusion but we are going for 1 2 and 3 so for me answer should be d 1 2 and 3 this no, is no, 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 no. but we have given as a, a 1 and 2 only d we not yes. give so uh, we are giving 1 and 2 only but you know as i said 1 and 2 and if they are mentioning they have right you know see in actually in 89 and 90 there there are confusion i mean uh, uh, different experts will say different things uh -huh. so anyway so you can also put it i mean these two question as a question mark with a doubt yes mind. yes so even though uh, uh, yeah in 89 we are given d as the answer and 90 we are given a as the answer but it could be uh, different also because of the problem in one of these statements okay so i think 90 we are yes. going for a but according to alog it can be even all the three also yes all yeah. of you so it can it can never be very Uh, you know confidently said that what we are saying is correct in these two questions anyway coming to question number 91 to 100 uh, in b series in a series it is be 71 to 80 in c series it is 21 to 30 and in d series 1 to 10 so d it is 1 to 10 c it is 21 to 30 and a it is 71 to 80 okay so question number 91 uh it is about the uh, you know the uh, compiling information on industrial dispute closure retrenchment layoff in factories uh, employing workers uh, it this data is compiled by labor bureau so 91 answer is c so straight away uh, there is uh, no confusion it's a straight forward factual question it is compiled by labor bureau so answer is c question number 92 about the coal controllers organization uh, that is question number 92 and the answer is a that is 1 2 and 3 in which the fourth statement is not considered to be correct it says it ensures that coal mining companies deliver the coal to end users in the prescribed time in fact one of the biggest problem in our country right now as you know very well is coal mining is taking place it is not reaching the end user on time that is there is a power shortage discussion also going on so coal controllers organization has no role in ensuring the coal being transported and reaching the end user so fourth statement is wrong and it has role in end user but ah. whether in prescribed time or not prescribed time is not mentioned at all so 1 2 and 3 are correct so uh, here it is 90 92 it is uh, you know a is the answer question number 
uh, it's a very interesting question about the fifth schedule of the Indian Constitution, and A is the answer. In fact, you know, we have to eliminate. Uh, in fact, it says it prevents the transfer of land of, of tribal people to non-tribal people. Yes, very clearly mentioned, governor has a role to play in this. And uh, once it sits only uh, one of them, so that's very clear. Create local self-governing body, no, that is not mentioned in uh, fifth schedule. Uh, convert area in the union territory, never. And uh, D, the state having such area would be a special category state, no. No mention about that. So A is the most appropriate answer in this 93. And uh, question number 94, it is about Indian Sanitation Coalition. It is a platform, but it's this platform is started by FIKI. It is not by funded by Government of India or World Health Organization. It is a mostly private company. Even government is also participating, but it is initiated by FIKI. So the first statement is wrong. Second is the National Institute of Urban Affairs is an apex body of the Ministry of uh, Housing and Urban Affairs. Uh, that is correct. So 94 is B. That second statement is correct. First statement is wrong. Indian Sanitation Coalition is an or it is a coalition started as a platform started by FIKI. So first is wrong. Second is correct. So answer is B. Question number 95, again a straightforward factual question, Environment Protection Act 1986 created Central Groundwater Authority, C yeah. is the answer. In, so, in, in Central Groundwater Authority Act, uh, means in this act, section 3, sub clause 3 talks about this, uh, you know, Central Groundwater Authority and its very important role to regulate and control development of and management of groundwater resources in the country. So, a straightforward question. If you know the provision of Environment Protection Act, then you can mark. Yeah. So, that is 95C. Coming to 96, United Nations Credentials Committee. Three Those options are... Those options are in this question. Yeah. So, 96A is the answer. Only three is correct. Because the first statement says it's a committee... First set up statement by... is fundamentally wrong. That yeah. it is a committee set up by UN Security Council and works under its supervision. No. It's a committee which is set up by... United Nations General Assembly and each year before General Assembly meeting, this committee is constituted by the President with nine members. Yeah. Okay. Second statement, we have not been able to find uh, when traditionally their meeting is, but at one place we found that there is a mention that their meeting is in November generally. and then they submit the report to General Assembly in December. December. Generally, they meet in November and submits report in December. So we are now assuming that the statement 2 is wrong. So 1 is wrong, now 2 is wrong, and 3rd is what is the mandate of this committee, that they have to assess the credentials of UN members before submitting the report to General Assembly for approval. So the answer will be A, 3 only. Yeah. Question number 97, uh, it is about the Polar Code. So it is a straightforward question again. If you know, you can easily answer. It's an international code of safety for ships operating in polar waters. I think it was uh, signed in 2017. So out of the four, straightforward, simple. But if you know, it's a factual one. If you don't know, nothing can be done. So it is about shipping in polar waters. So in 2017, so A is the answer. Coming to 98, it's about the UN General Assembly. And uh, in this 98 question, answer is D, 1, 2, 3. All the three statements are correct. It says General Assembly can grant observer status to non-members. Yes, there are so many observers. Even Palestine is a non-member. Vatican is a non-member as an observer status. Then intergovernmental organizations can seek observer status, like European Union. Intergovernmental organization, yes, they are doing. And many other UN bodies are having observer status there. And permanent observers in the UN General Assembly... Uh, can maintain mission at the UN. Yes, all the three statements are correct. So, answer is T. Coming to T board in India. Now, it's a thematic repetition. Yeah, so already T was asked again. No, T. Even, even earlier they have asked question on T board as well. Yes. Twice or thrice they have asked. Yes, uh, yes. I think you know, silk board, <laughs> tea board, coffee board. You know, they have uh, rubber board. They have asked question. Any, but this year, three questions on T. So, company is a tea drinker, is an addict to tea, uh, is a part of the question. Tea. So, in this question, in this question, there are some uh, statements which are there. Uh, so, tea board is a statutory body. This statement is uh, absolutely correct that it is a, a statutory body and it has been created through Tea Act of 1953. 
Second statement says that it's a regulatory body attached to Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. Now, most of you who don't know this may mark this statement correct, but it is not attached to Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers, but it is attached to Ministry of Commerce. So, the second statement is wrong. The T Board's head office is situated in Bangalore. Now, this is wrong. T Board's head office is situated in Kolkata not in Bangalore, and they have two overseas offices, which are at Dubai and Moscow. Okay, so statement 1 and 4 correct, statement 2 and 3 wrong, the answer for this question is D, 1 and 4. Yeah, uh, finally, in question number 100, it's about green washing, and uh, as we know, again, is a straightforward answer, factual one, this term is used when we are creating false impression, A is the answer. Conveying a false impression that companies' products are eco-friendly and environmentally sound. It is like many of our so programs. So, promotion of perception that organizations' products are eco-friendly. No, I, I say, you know, this is like a, a coaching institutes claiming that all ranks are from our institute, you know. Finally, if you add all the ranks put together, the land claimed by the institute, at least 10,000 ranks are there in India. All, <laughs> or, or, or all questions are from or, our yes, notes. All, all questions are from our notes. All ranks are from the institute. So, I, you know, should you just add the top 10 institutes, I think it will cross 3,000 or 4,000 ranks. Anyway, so, uh, 100, answer is A. And finally, uh, you know, I would like to, I mean, in, according to our classification, which we have all agreed, uh, you know, from, it is one of the most, uh, I will say, balanced paper as far as the subject matter Modern. asked is concerned. See, we have geography around 14 questions, history 14 questions, science 14 questions, economics 15 questions, quality maybe 12, environment around 10, the current affairs, you know, even pure current affairs, if you say it is 10, you know, international relations, IR around 7, general knowledge maybe 4, of course, this people, uh, depending upon their vested interest, they will say this is my area, their area, like even Alok in, in, in <laughs> economics uh, and uh, science, what we are finding, greater overlapping with current affairs is what we have found. So, if we don't uh, go for watertight compartments, then by and large what Sir is presenting is the you know, module-wise number of questions so, in paper 1. So, according to me, economics is 15. History, science and geography 14 each. Quality it is 12. Environment is 10. IR, international relations related around 7 and general knowledge around 4. So, when we need to have a balanced preparation, that is the bottom line for all. You cannot leave any area. And in history, if you look, I think more, hardly any modern India question. Uh, yeah, so, that is also a concern because uh, traditionally we tend to ignore ancient and medieval and end up uh, you know, doing more modern, but now it's also a problem. So we the need to. Culture is yeah, ancient, culture, medieval, yes. and current. even you know, in current affairs, that international and all, mostly current related only. But just see, if you have that uh, flair of reading a uh, general news item rather than uh, only prepared material, if you read the newspaper, at least read the headlines, especially Hindu newspaper or Indian Express. Uh, it can be of great help. So wide reading. The textbook reading, these are the kind of things, you know, I think we should, and understanding, not just mugging up things, you know, that uh, understanding, uh, quality answers, I think with good understanding, economics again requires good understanding, geography requires, of course, no such facts, of, uh, of course, some map related questions are there, but otherwise, we need good understanding also. And while we are giving explanation for uh, answers in paper one, through message from some of the students, we have learned that this year's CSAT paper is comparatively easy. Yeah. I don't know, means sir. Some of them have sent this message. The comprehension passages yeah. were more manageable this year. Uh, comprehension and passages were more manageable so, this year. Yeah. So the possibility of you qualifying CSAT is high. And uh, from our side, we say that if you are scoring 75, 78 and above, you are a borderline case and you must very seriously start the preparation for the main 80 to 85 you know the possibility of you getting a call for main is very high this is for general category and accordingly you can you know uh, based on your own category can judge what can be the uh, cutoff possible cutoff for this year you can see the previous year cutoffs and you can judge accordingly 
it may not be much different for various other categories. So the bottom line is relax maybe today. Uh, maybe one more day rest, but not oh, more than that. <laughs> and relax. start immediately, fight it out. There's a golden chance waiting for you to clear this exam. We never know. Even now, if you can start. And one it. good thing in comparison with previous year, that this year, uh, the number of people who will get the call for main will be high because the number of vacancies are Higher. thousand plus. Okay. So last year only 685 people have qualified, but in comparison to that, if you see somewhere around 25-30% more vacancies are there. So even at uh, prelims level, uh, the number of successful candidates will be 25-30% higher than 2021 attempt. So that further can pull down the cutoff. If not, know. it will not increase. At if moment. not, then it will not increase. Okay, so that's all. So one, one, one last message for all of you is that uh, this circus called examination analysis uh, is okay for entertainment. One or two days of analysis, then you have to get back into the reality of preparation. Uh, we invite all the students to come and talk to us, attend some of the workshops we, we will have. You can walk in and discuss with the optional teachers. We have the history faculty here. We have the faculty for public administration. We have the faculty for sociology, Shweta Madam. Geography, I'll be there. GS will be headed by Jojo sir and Manish sir. Do come, walk in on, uh, on any of these coming days and discuss what should be a strategy for preparation for the mains. After two years of pandemic, we are getting back to normal. I think uh, the constraints of last two years have been now removed. Prepare well, write answers, join a good answer writing practice program and test series, which we even ALS Educami will be offering. So start the preparation. Don't take a long break and get into the discussions of what is the right cutoff or what is the right person of people qualifying. So from my side, it's all the best. My wishes. Yes, you can conclude it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.